my second welcome to my IT channel. Today I came with another one informative video regarding speaking module. So today I'm going to discuss you regarding how we can utilize three minute preparation time very effectively. So many students have many doubts regarding the utilization of this three minutes. So some students used to do in this way, they will uh, read and prepare the role play and they'll keep quiet. When the interlocutor will tell them start talking, they will just start talking and some of the points will be missed. And sometimes if the interlocutor if asks questions in different order, of course they will get stuck. So no need for any uh, doubt how to do this payment preparation time. I will explain you very clearly. So I can tell you one um, easy tips that three times you have to read that note, what are the tasks they have given. Three times how we can read within this three minutes. So you may have confusion. So first what you have to do, just start writing that paragraph. Okay, so in that first paragraph, almost you will get complete scenario about the role play. The setting, what is your role and what is patient's role and what is the thing, it is non-case or unknown case. If it is given, you have just examined or you, you, you have just seen the patient or you have just started the conversation. Something they have, the hint means it is non-scenario. So there, no need to uh, greet or no need for uh, your self-interaction. So what you have to do, you have to just write it down uh, there. I mean, in the, above the first task, you can just mention, well, uh, Mr. or Miss Slash. At that time, you can ask uh, the name of the patient. So how may I address you during the role play? If there is baby and uh, parent, you can ask how may I address you and your baby. Just write it over there. Okay, so you can just write, well, Mr. or Miss, uh, uh, so, so and so on. Uh, thank you for allowing me to examine. So this thing, you can just write it over the first task so that you will not miss the introduction of a known scenario. If it is unknown scenario, it is okay, fine. You can do it as a normal scenario. That is the first thing you have to do. And the next thing, uh, just uh, see the task. Just read it like very quickly. Just go to all the tasks very quickly. Then one time you have finished your reading. Second time, when you will come to the task, now you have to read very carefully. You have to underline very important points, not all the points. Some students used to do, they will underline every point. There is no use if you are underlining every point. So what you have to do, only the relevant point you have to underline. That means when you will look at the interlocutor, look at the interlocutor's face, and when you come back to the case, I mean the role play card, you should not get confusion. You have to be clear where you stopped and where you have to start. So this is the uh, this is the easiness if you are underlining the points. How you can underline? Example, the first point is confirm patient's visit. So what you have to do? Underline confirm and visit. The, the second subtask will be there. The next thing will be maybe uh, you can just, um, uh, the question will be maybe find out patient's concern. So find out and concern. Okay. And there will be the next task will be explore patient's uh, previous uh, exposure with the um, any procedure. So you can just underline previous experience. Okay. So like that you can do. And sometimes there will be explore, sometimes reassure, sometimes find out, sometimes confirm. So this first task, that is, the, that is the task exactly what you have to go into. Sometimes explore me. That is find out only. The meaning is same, find out. So you have to know every phrase is what they are using in the um, OEP speaking cards. Because it is like easy if you are familiar familiar with all these terms and all. Like find out, explain, explore, confirm, and establish uh, the consent. Establish the consent of the patient to continue with the procedure. Reassure and confirm. So like the many phrases are there. So if you, for, if you go through the go through many cards, you will be familiarized with these all phrases. That is the thing first you have to underline. Don't underline only these phrases. You have to underline what is the content, what you have to explain, what you have to find out, what you have to uh, reassure, <clears throat> and what you have to ask the patient, ask from the patient. Okay, so these things are not, you have to just underline and you have to go. So at the end, now you have almost underlined the main points. So you will not uh, get confusion with any subtask. So what is the importance of underlining is you will not lose any or you will not neglect any subtask. Sometimes we will ask the first question and we will look at the interlocutor's face. After getting answer, we will jump to the next task. We will not go to the subtask. Sometimes we will miss these points. And all. So once if you underline and you, you will be familiarized with these all things. 
and the next thing why uh, or how you can avoid uh, this error again means after completing the conversation just put the tick mark at the side okay explain example if you can film the visit put the tick mark next one you have to ask the patient's concern regarding the procedure after that you just tick the put mark so put the tick mark so that you will not uh, get confusion while talking sometimes the interlocutor will ask without order so you have to answer for that uh, question then you have to go back to your previous the questions so at that time you will think you will go to the question paper and you will think and there will be a gap so it will affect your presentation and your mark as well and the one more tick i will uh, tips i will tell you uh, when you are reading the third time that means the third time you will get anyway or even the second time sometimes uh, there will be uh, like um, find out patient's concern or ask patient's concern will be there wherever is there you have to put a question mark in the left side of the margin so that it is easy for you to ask the question then and there not only in that area you have to ask do you have any concern like example if you are talking to the patient or you are explaining the discharge summary of course there will be more things will be there many uh, maybe 15 plus um, explanations will be there everything in a, in a one stretch if you are explaining it will be like a one way conversation it is not a monologue it will not be a dialogue so what you have to do um, when you are preparing in 3 minute preparation time itself you have to put question mark whenever you have to ask to the patient like you can uh, choose different type of questions do you have any concern uh, uh, is it clear for you or do you want me to repeat anything or do you want me to explain anything more is there anything to get clarification or um, uh, do you want me to uh, explain any point in detail at last you can ask do you have any more concern or if you do you have any more questions or do you have any more um, uh, clarifications like that different different questions you have to ask don't repeat it okay so uh, it is uh, I, what i mean is uh, you have to ask three or four times uh, especially in case of discharge not so wherever you can ask it should not be like each and every time you should not ask it will not be good you can ask one way that is first you will ask do you have any concern you will answer that then next you can um give the explanation for your further information i would like to explain you so and so next you can ask do you have anything more or if you do you want me to explain and say answer for that and next question also you can reduce yourself and you can answer it to the next question you can ask again if they have any question so it will be like a uh, unique way that means you will involve even the patient also so equal importance will be there and the conversation will be active and you will get uh, like uh, uh a, you, your presentation will be good means of course you will get mark if there will be some mistakes also even though you will get uh, some great mark for the presentation and all so in this way you can make your conversation very effective so you have to um, underline you have to add the name if it is relevant and when you are asking the name you have to write it very clearly okay patient's name especially if you are talking to a parent you have to add baby's name as well as parent name sometimes both gender will be same okay so you will get confusion uh, after two after a few minutes you will get confusion who is patient who is parent so what you have to do baby's name you have to write it in like small letter and father name or mother parent name you can write in a bigger letter so it will be easy because you will use parent's name many times not the baby's name baby's name you will use only one time and one more important tip you have to see whether the baby is baby boy or girl this is more important why because throughout the role play you will use your baby your child your baby your child it will be like a um, it's not it's like a some see or talking not be a pleasant for the reader so what do you have to do if the baby is bo- i mean the baby is boy you can do like if it is essential for him to provide or please try to give him or if the baby is girl you can i can just tell that um, i wish her a sweet recovery so like that if you use if he or she the subject means it will be it's like a casual talk or else it will be like by heart the way you will present it okay so always do it like it naturally and if you want to do like a normally means you can use in you can use this he or she okay the subject should be in this manner so the one thing it is related to the name and gender everything and then one more thing you should not make any confusion with the gender during your conversation you will lose the mark you will not get b score okay and uh, the name also the parent and baby's name also you should not uh, make any confusion and another one more thing i want to tell you that i want to stress the point of course uh, when you are doing the conversation with a parent you may have many confusion you may um, you may make many mistakes unconsciously 
is unknowingly like uh, you are explaining to the parent it is essential uh, for you to uh, provide analgesics or it is essential for it is essential to get doctor consultation means what is that you are telling to the parent parent how to get consultation so it is wrong it is totally wrong so you you have to tell that it is essential for your uh, baby to get consultation or else it is essential for him to get consultation with the general practitioner or it, it is um, benefit for him to use the sling for at least 3 to 6 weeks like that okay please provide him uh, analgesics if required please um uh, like you can tell that please get him back to the hospital after 6 weeks or it is essential to come back to the hospital after 6 weeks with him to it is directed to the parent so um don't make any mistake when you are talking to the parent be conscious you are talking to someone else not to the patient okay so this is the easiest way um how you can utilize the 3 minute preparation time and the last one i want to tell you regarding the conclusion so when you are doing payment preparation time itself you can find out how you have to conclude the conversation don't uh, keep it for that the last moment so uh, when you are reading that first paragraph itself it will be clear how, how you can conclude the um, your conversation so if it is discharge process means of course it will be at the end do we have any more concern if you don't have any other question may i proceed with the procedure or may i proceed with the discharge process or may i proceed with your vaccination if it is for the procedure and if it is like a simple visit means you can tell that i hope i have clarified all your doubts if you don't have any other question uh, so i will provide you the leaflet so that you will get enough um, uh, information and if you need any uh, clarification please do not hesitate to contact with us something like that we can make and we can tell that i have a nice day or um, i wish you a speedy recovery something like that we can conclude these things and all no need to uh, write there but one thing you have to write it there if there is a procedure of this a discharge of course we can just write it under the last task may i proceed with slash so according to the scenario you can complete it okay because at the end of course everybody used to tell that thank you for your visit or or the high wishes for your recovery example i will tell you the patient came for pre operative assessment and you are asking many things to the patient and you explain everything at the end you are telling that okay mr john thank you for your visit have a nice day so what does that mean you are sending the patient back to home the patient came for pre operative assessment and actually patient is scheduled for surgery so that is a mistake you have to conclude very clearly may i proceed with your pre operative assessment okay if you don't have any other question may i proceed with that so this thing also you can write it under the last um, task during the treatment preparation time so this is only the thing what you have to do uh, so minimum you have to practice when you are practice you have to do in the same way three times you have to read that case note this every point will be uh, fixed in your mind so from wherever the interlocutor will ask you the question you will be familiarized with these all things and when the interlocutor will ask the question don't forget to put a tick mark sometimes interlocutor will ask you from the uh, maybe from the down or from middle when you will answer for that put a tick mark there then go back to the previous see the previous tick mark then continue with that okay so in this way you, you can be you can make the conversation very Uh, uh very effectively and your conversation should be in a med- medium speed it should not be uh, high speed also and don't make it very slow also because you could not complete the uh, task if you are very slow and if you are too fast the uh, interlocutor or the um, evaluator could not understand your conversation regarding the humming it's okay fine you can just um humming will be there for everybody so don't think about humming but there should not be gap don't make any gap because if you are making gap uh, the interlocutor can identify or the evaluator can identify that you are searching something in the paper so don't make them uh, to think in that way so just make a uh, like a neutral um, conversation equally you have to make, equally you have to give the chance for the interlocutor to talk if you are not talking the interlocutor will be silent and important thing keep it in your mind don't depend upon your interlocutor persons are different okay their character will be different maybe they will sit from uh, afternoon and will uh, very late uh, for the exam and they will be fed up with this all same question they are repeating to everybody of course their mind will be sometimes disturbed also so even interlocutors are not supportive also you have to maintain that um, uh, presentation okay so either they are uh, like um, um, in a low mood or if they are okay and if, you, if somebody they will be very cooperative somebody they will not answer for anything somebody they will be very new to the uh, position and they don't know maybe 
how to uh, ask you the question. Sometimes they will give you all information in the uh, one stretch and they will not um, give you the chance to ask like separately. Whatever the thing, just keep it in your um, presentation. Your way of presentation should be same and keep the um, uh, speed, maintain the speed from the starting to end and don't give extra or additional information. Just whatever things it is given, you can just explain. Only the reassurance can be given extra. That is the additional thing you can give. And present or um, present the conversation like neatly. Okay, no, don't make it like clumsy. Like it will be very clear, should be very clear. So all we are nurses, we are working in the hospital. So you know that every patients are not same. Sometimes the patients will be very cooperative for you. Sometimes they will be very aggressive. Sometimes they will be like a neutral. So to everybody, we have to maintain uh, the same the same face <laughs> because in hospital maybe we could not make in that sense but in OET sick we have to make that sense okay so I hope uh, this uh, video is benefit for you just practice in the way and see if you have any uh, improvement okay you can try in that way keep uh, in the starting for the beginners I'm telling that don't keep three minutes preparation time in the starting in the beginning you have to practice um, as much as you can take enough time for the practice in the starting time but when you are nearing your exam example only 10 days are remaining for your exam keep three minutes preparation time and practice it and keep five minutes pre uh, uh, presentation time and do it uh, at the five minutes uh, time you have to stop your conversation okay or else you will be very lazy you will not think about the importance of the timing so i hope uh, this video is helpful for you try in this way and give me the feedback if you get any benefit we will see you with another one informative video. Until then, bye. Take care.